Um, I'd like to introduce you to Mark Rowe Smith. He's the uh, founder of People of Print. Uh, he makes the people, or he published the People of Print book. Uh, he makes uh, Print Isn't Dead magazine, which we sent out to Stack subscribers this month. Uh, and he makes Posterzine as well, which he's going to explain um, to you now. So, uh, Mark Roy, take it away. Hello, everybody. C can you all hear me okay? Yeah, okay. So, yep, my name is Mark Roy, and I run a company called People of Print. Uh, we're based in London, and we, we basically publish things that are based around print, and we run live print workshops, and we have a magazine and a book, and essentially talk about how print is used, in, industriously and creatively. So what I'm going to talk about is what I did before the publishing side of things, uh, going to New York and all of the things leading up to uh, publishing, and then I will talk about our latest project, which is Posterzine, which is an A1 poster which folds down into a little mini magazine. So, first things first. Um, I went to Brighton University and I studied uh, illustration and we shared a class with graphic design. Um, and this is the, uh, an example of my work where it's an A1 poster and I had my CV on the back and I folded it down and I sent it out to all the people that I wanted to work with. Um, and this kind of mirrors itself in the thing which we've just released. Um, this is a project that I did um, where I was just basically emptying my pen onto a piece of paper and connecting the dots, and it got picked up by a band called Crystal Castles. Um, and they said, can we use it on a uh, seven-inch record? I said, yeah, go ahead. I was very happy at the time to have my work published on, in this way. Um, and then they basically took it and printed thousands of T-shirts, and, and I had to threaten them with you know, the, the Association of Illustrators to get some, some money. And they basically paid for the copyright of that, and that allowed me to go to New York and, and have an experience there. Um, this is an example of a two-layer screen print and a, a three-layer um, printed T-shirt. This is the opposite story, where I got paid absolutely nothing for it, but they're a band which I really liked at the time. And uh, the funny story about this poster is I printed 80 of them, took it to the venue, and they, it got mistaken for trash and just got thrown in the bin. So that's the only poster that exists of that. Um, some more example of my early kind of publishing work, making a zine. Um, I really love two-layer printing, so this is just cyan and magenta. As they overlay, you get that third color, and then you obviously have the paper color. So essentially, you have four colors and all of the tints in between if you run gradients through. Um, this leads me on to kind of uh, my first internship. So I, I basically saw these, this work at uh, Momo in San Francisco, and it's a company called Urban Inks, and it only has it on that poster at the top there. Um, they don't normally put who they are on the posters because they used to paste it up on the streets, hence the name Urban Inks. Um, and I got in touch with them and said, can I do an internship with you? And they said, we don't accept people from the UK, you have to be living in Brooklyn or, or, or New York. So I lied and I said that I lived there, and um, they, they took me. So that was my first internship. Um, and then after the three months um, that I spent out there doing this internship, totally unpaid, using the money that I had from Crystal Castles, I'd met lots of different printmakers, I'd met lots of um, illustrators, graphic designers, and a kind of like undercurrent of this kind of creative print world. And I, I came back and I was living in Bristol at the time, and I did my first little show in a little gallery. Um, got people, you know, Sarah Pop from Canada, different people from all over the, uh, the world, and pulled it together and did my first little show. Um, that's the, the um, little zine that we made, and we just had the poster sheets, so it was like front and back, paginated, and then cut down. Uh, Le Gun, who are an amazing um, collective based in London, and some more work there from the first show. Um, and then I went to uh, do a different internship in the big place there in, in Manhattan. Um, and that was, I, can't, I don't know if you can see it, so an unhappy face. So I was working for a big ad agency, and it was the opposite of my you know, small time kind of meet, meeting this like, undercurrent of people. It was like working for big clients like History Channel, Dove, and, you know, and uh, I just kind of didn't enjoy that, and I didn't li like to be told what to do. So I, I quit, and I thought, right, I'll, I will make people a print. So, um, at the time, we just had 
uh, a really simple blog where um, you click on an image and it takes you straight out to the site. We didn't have any content. So I took PHP courses with this guy, Marosh. Um, and there were about 30 people in the class in London. And it, uh, every week, it just whittled down, whittled down. And I was the only person left in the class. And I was like, look, what I want to achieve is I want to make a website which has a blog, et cetera, da, da, da. And he was like, let's go to the pub. So we just went to the pub, and then he built my website for me. Um, and then this is kind of how it looks now. So it's kind of like a simple image, text on the side, and then you can click the plus or the, the title, and it opens up into a, um, a long-form article. Um, and then at the top here, you can see that we have a store, a directory of people, which is how the website started. So it just clicks out to the people. Um, we have a magazine, poster scene, which is this one the image at the top. And then we have an events page where we feature other people's events. Um, OK, so what have we done? We've, we've made the blog. I've started to collect people together and started to write about other people rather than writing about my own work on my own blog. And this was my first example of a curated show. So I pulled together people from New York, um, you know, from the, basically from all of the people that I'd met on my kind of journey. And we went to Druck Berlin, which is in uh, Stadtbad. I don't, know, I don't know if that's right, but it's a disused swimming pool, and they just put on this amazing show. It's by Dolly Demarati, who runs Mother Drucker, um, and it's just a really fantastic thing to be part of, um, just screen printing in the middle of a disused swimming pool. Um, and these are uh, some of the kind of color versions of, of what we were uh, curating, and we call it the CM series, Cyan and Magenta, and, and, and the two-layer printing thing kind of runs through a lot of our publishing work. Um, I just really love that kind of overlay and, and choosing the colors which you're printing rather than just being full color digital print. Um, so after that experience, I was like, right, I'll do my own little show. So these are some posters which are, um, uh, we, we basically hired out a pub for 70 pounds, charged people three pounds to come, and we had a band, we had a DJ, we had live t-shirt printing, poster printing, letterpress, and just, you know, had like a little shindig, and uh, we filmed it. Um, and we, sent the we had the film online, and then we got uh, selected to do this, a similar thing at Pick Me Up, which is at Somerset House. Um, I don't know if you've, uh, any of you know of it, but it's a big graphics art arts festival in Somerset House. And we had three big walls like this. And we had a uh, T-shirt carousel. We had uh, an Adana press. We had type cut out of wood. We had a tree stump, which had been made into stamps. Um, and letterpress, woodcut, with the lot, really. Tie-dye, we just had kind of, uh, and, and that was the year that it kind of transitioned from being kind of a graphics art show into kind of introducing workshops and selling workshop tickets. Um, and that led on to us um, working in the Levi's um, store on Regent Street, the flagship store in Regent Street. Uh, we was working with Anthony Burrell, and uh, people could tweet in um, a sentence, and if it got selected, we would expose the screens, and they could come in and print, pick up a blank Levi's T-shirt and print it themselves on the day. Um, and that was run during the 2012 Olympics, uh, which was really busy. A really bad image here, but it's um, inside the V&A Museum, and uh, we were printing for Mastercard, and it was for the Hollywood uh, show, all of the Hollywood costumes, and we did Hollywood themes prints, and people could come along and just print their own T-shirt. And that's the queue for the T-shirts inside the v and I don't know why they let us in there with all of the ink and stuff next to the statues. Uh, and that led on to us working at the Design Museum, doing a very similar thing. So we kind of went from writing about print to exhibiting and then going into kind of showing people how it's done and running these kind of live workshops. And then I kind of had this... Uh, I didn't have People of Print as a limited company at that time, and I was working on other projects, and this is one of them. So Node is based in Nepal, um, and... Uh, the guy that runs it is called Chris Horton. Um, he, he's a children's book illustrator. He's really, really doing very well. And he just put up a thing on Twitter saying, can somebody manage rugs? And I said, yeah, I can manage rugs. And we, we got um, 18 different people, uh, illustrators, and we basically set up a grid. Each pixel represented a knot in the, in the rug, and it was all hand-woven in Nepal um, with, with a set kind of color range, which they had. Um, and all, uh, we sold them in the design museum, and the money, the profits, go to support this um, school and an orphanage in Nepal. 
And this is another project which I did in Kibera. I know that some people up next or, or after the next person are, are going to talk about their trip to Kibera. It's um, the largest uh, urban slum in, in Africa. And I went out with um, about 16 screens, pots of ink. Um, I took a little hinge, um, tape, and some, and, and some artwork on, on the screens. And this is a little print setup that I made for them. Um, and they basically use a food blender to take the rubbish from the sides of the road, put them into these, um, put them into these kind of trays and make, um, make paper and just leave it to dry out on a tea towel in the sun. That's an example of the kind of rubbish that's left on the side of the road. Uh, that's me driving in to the slum. It's just a vast landscape of these kind of roofs. And then these are the, some examples of what we made, um, which was using the artwork from uh, Chris Horton again. So just projects leading on to the next. And at this point, I signed a deal with Thames and Hudson um, for our first book. So I was collating all of these kind of print projects, meeting all of these people, writing about them on the blog, and I thought, right, we, we need to put this into print because we're, we're online and we're talking about print. Um, so we looked at prices to print it ourselves. It was very expensive, so I sent our proposal out to about 10 different publishers. Thames and Hudson got back to us, and we took the deal. Um, and we went through a whole ordeal, uh, not ordeal, but we went through like a period of time where it's kind of, uh, it taught me that I wanted to actually self-publish rather than work with a publisher. Um, more kind of examples of workshops, just keeping the, the theme going with the live printing, working with different people like Anthony Burrell and different illustrators and designers. Um, and that led us on to create a department store, which is, the, the way that we aim for it to go, uh, we've just been sponsored with software which Amazon runs on. We want it to be a marketplace for uh, illustrators and designers to showcase their work, but we have really affordable rates, so it's not the kind of standard retail markup. It works in a drop shipping method where they are responsible for sending their items out and the transaction will be direct with the, the vendor. And it, it can be anybody across the globe that's selling. So have a look at it. I think we've got about 60 people on there at the moment. And this is where we sell our magazine and our book through. Um, and what, I guess what I normally say is kind of all of these things which I created, so the events, the, the store, the blog, the publishing, all works as a kind of healthy ecosystem for the company, People of Print, uh, because we can sell it direct through our store. Um, so we, we needed to make £4,520 to create our magazine. I, I I'd had the book deal, and I was like, right, let's do something a bit smaller than a book. Uh, let's make a magazine. And this is how Print Isn't Dead magazine was spawned. And um, we actually made 6,834, and this is an example of our first issue, which sold out in about three weeks. Uh, we only had a run of 1,000, because that's like the initial plan. Um, it was just, could you all hear me OK, by the way? It was like, yeah. Um, it was, um, you know, the first thing which we, we did, and it was a test, basically, to see if, if it you know, took off, and it did. So we, we stuck with it, and we have them. Um, these are some examples of the magazine itself being printed within the magazine. So we were sponsored by Pure Print and Fedragoni, and we went to the place where it was printed, and we, we shot it and then filled in the pages at the end of the magazine. Um, and we like to use these kind of extra channels. So you have CMYK normally when you're printing, but you can have uh, this vast ra uh, ra range of different colors. And we, we used 805 there, which is a fluorescent kind of orangey pink. Um, and for the next issue, we did another Kickstarter. So we had a pot of money which we had made from selling the first one. Um, we, we wanted to just add more, so we basically added more pages. We added two extra spot colors, and then we paid for Heretic to do a screen-printed cover. So we had 500 covers, which were all unique, and they had six layers of ink going down. This is just some of the examples of what they looked like. And this is them being produced, so they're all hand screen-printed, uh, lovingly by Heretic, who are just absolutely amazing. Uh, putting down all of these kind of psychedelic colors and layers and, uh, you know, different colorways. Obviously, that's cropped into four, so there are actually four magazine covers on each print, so it makes the job a little bit easier for them. And we had, uh, like I said, we had two extra spot colors in this, so we had fluorescent pink and fluorescent blue, um, but then we ran like a cyan layer 
under that as well. So you can get this kind of like ghosting effect here. This is, I think this is actually a feature on Jeremy Leslie. Uh, we feature it in Oz magazine, which is like a 60s counterculture magazine. Uh, you should definitely all read it. It's absolutely amazing, really cool, vibrant colors. And if you look at issue three, which is the pink and blue one, that is the reason why we chose the colors for that particular issue. And every single issue changes, so we use a different um, type foundry. We use different colors. We use different paper. We, we change basically everything. The baseline grid has to change. Um, issue two was designed by James Lunn, who's somewhere in the crowd. Um, and this is kind of where things started to progress for us, because we had like focused a little bit more on the editorial content rather than uh, it being like a collection of people. There was a, th a theme running through this. Um, and issue one got featured on Mag Culture. Um, Jeremy Leslie bought it. And one of the comments was about it being like a lack of editorial. So because we come from a design background, that's kind of uh, was our weak point, And that's where we're trying to kind of develop and focus on. Um, but still keeping that kind of like visual striking aesthetic and showcasing print in the actual magazine. Um, and the book came out after our, our mag, uh, a second issue of our magazine. So we, it had been two years working on this book, and it was a long process. Um, and that's why we self-published, um, you know, Print Isn't Dead magazine. Um, so these are some of the shots of us actually releasing the third issue of our magazine in conjunction with the book. Um, and we always do live printing at our events and give away t-shirts. This is by Eike Koenig, uh, or Koenig in um, Berlin. He's, a, he's been kind of involved with a lot of our projects lately. He's really great. Um, and we um, had a custom cover. So for the third issue of our magazine, we were sponsored by HP. And um, we were using HP Indigo technology for the cover and Litho for the inside, um, which meant that we could basically make every single cover different. Um, so we, we kind of had a cover which explained how it was printed, four hits of white ink on what paper with the design. and these are some of the examples from Instagram um, of people uh, sending in what they wanted. They were all hand types. So it wasn't automated. This was all done by James Lunn. And actually, one of them there, look in the bottom corner, it says, Oi Lunn, that's his, that's his uh, fiance, telling him to put the kettle on and stop designing. Um, yeah, more examples of all of those. We had some really good ones. One of the favorites was uh, by Andrew Lazowski saying, the internet is dead, which was great. Um, and it, again, the kind of the way that it was printed was using variable data. So we featured things in the magazine which were using variable data in, in a similar context. So it's almost kind of like a print magazine about print, and the medium is the message, kind of thing. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Graphic, but uh, Graphic with a K, but they were. Um, they were unable to continue their magazine, and they, they went out of print, and they were bought out by a company called Protein in, in London. Um, so they're totally online, and I thought, that's a bit of a shame. Um, so we gave them six pages of the magazine to, to kind of put them back into print. And uh, I, I don't know why I'm such like a you know, supporter of print, but the, well, I do know why. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great thing. Um, and we're featuring lots of... Uh, different things which wouldn't normally be featured in the context that it is. So this is kind of like a soft porn um, magazine, and it's shot in the kind of 80s, like vibrant red lipstick, and, you know, and, and, and we kind of switch the artwork over, so you've got like the two-layer orange and blue there. So we've got CMYK and then orange and blue. Um, this is Ica's piece, which he did for um, uh, Element 3. And see that little bit of text in the, in the top there? That was the kind of amount of space which we had for him. And I said, Ika, can you send over some information about yourself and what you do, and we'll write something up about you. And he's like, no worries, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. And um, on the magazine had gone to print. It was the very last spread. This was the very last one to be printed. And he basically sent over, um, he sent over, 2,500 words to fit into it. So, so I was like, well, we can't fit you in. And he was like, well, take me out of the magazine then. I was like, oh, uh, I, can't. I was like, no, no, we can't, you know, we have to figure out a way of doing it. So that is why Posterzine was uh, kind of born. Um, it's kind of like a supplement to the magazine. Uh, and it kind of, like I was saying, it comes back to the very th first thing that I did with my CV. Um, 
all it is is a folded piece of paper. So that's A1, and it folds down, and it creates a, a mini magazine. And it's a monograph, so each person is, uh, each issue is a different person or studio or place. And there's a, a theme running through at the moment where we allow people to choose their own colors. Um, and we kind of do, use the overlays. Um, so we have the front cover, back cover, uh, the masthead. That's the introduction as, as to who they are. And then it opens up into an interview. And then on the back is the front cover as a, an A1 poster. Uh, this is Hello Lucky from San Francisco. Um, so the focus is actually on the kind of poster, but we like to have an insight as to who they are, what they do, how they work. And it's always a two-layer print, um, offset litho. Um, but you know, we can just create more colors by you know, running a gradient through, overlaying the two, or utilizing the two colors to their best ability. Um, Anthony Burrell, which I'm sure you've all heard of, he did this specifically for Posterzine. Um, again, lo lots of lovely kind of uh, uh, typographic work running through. Um, Eric Kessels from Amsterdam with pictures of loads of rabbits on his head and other kind of penises measured against things. Um, he's absolutely, you, you need to look at his work, he's, he's really great. Um, and then James Lern, our designer, did a special typographic issue. Um, and normally, we, I lay it out, or the, the team lays it out, but James Lunn actually designed, uh, so we interviewed him, and then he designed his own issue, um, which was really cool. And at this point, um, GF Smith actually got in touch with us and said, right, we really like what you're doing with Posterzine. Um, can you print on our paper? Um, black and gold. So James Lunn, off the back of um, Printers and Dead Element 3, got selected to um, work for HP for their new book. Um, it's, it's not open to the public, and it was, I think it cost about £65 an issue to make. Um, but it's, it's absolutely fantastic, and it showcases all of the HP Indigo stuff. So I just want to kind of talk about Posterzine as, it, as the format. So it's an A4 sheet of paper, uh, sorry, it's an A1 sheet of paper which folds down to A4. Um, and because of the way that it folds in on itself, three times, you actually get a crow's foot in the corner where the paper gathers, which a lot of designers are probably like, oh, you know, it's a bit dodgy. Um, but I got in touch with the British Library, and I told them that I wanted to get an I ISSN number and register it as a magazine. And because of the way that it actually folds like that, it, me it meant that it had enough pages to be classed as a magazine. So it's the only poster in the British Library that's classed as a magazine, and we have an ISSN number, and it's recorded with the, the British Library. Um, it's printed in Leeds using two-color spot litho. So a lot of printers get in touch with us all the time and want to either be featured on the website or print our work for us. And obviously, the more north you go in England, the, the cheaper things really get. But they're absolutely fantastic. They've done a really great job. And um, I, I, we did switch printers, but it's just one of those things where if you find the right printer that you're working with, you can make some really good things happen. Um, and the model of it is, um, at the moment, so we distribute with Anten Books, who go through UK and Europe, and then we sell for our department store um, direct, and we're focusing on the wholesale thing. It's like a, a very new, it's a very new thing. So we're on the sixth issue, and it's monthly. Um, it's 5.99 an, an issue, and it comes out every um, first Tuesday of the month. Um, you can subscribe to it and get a 20 percent. Um, a discount, and it's it's basically it's kind of like Netflix. You you can just kind of cancel at any time, um, and it's like a rolling fee, and that's kind of what, what we're trying to focus on with it. Um, and where we want to move with it is we want to work with companies and brands. So Outlook Festival want to use it as a, their kind of marketing material. We'd love to do something with Adidas or Nike or something where we you know we can work with them and create this beautiful poster, um, but it would run as a separate series. Um, we want to increase the frequency, so at the moment it's monthly, but what's not to say that we could do it you know, on a weekly basis because we've got some amazing content. Uh, the, I mean, the next issue is Kate Moross. Um, we have, um, who do we have? Uh, I forgot his name now. Um, and we, we want to do a print event and an exhibition with all of the... Um, with all of the posters at the end. So we'll have, uh, you know, after a year, we'll have 12 prints, and we can have them in, post, uh, in frames, and we'll also sell them as a publication, and then also document it and maybe, maybe make a publication of the people which we've um, featured. And that's it.
Nein, nicht das. Nein, das ist ein Stichentscheidung.